just about equal justice and equal protection under the law for all human beings. Who would ever think that in the 21st century we would have to advocate for equal justice and equal protection under the law? I, I'm, it's, I'm almost shocked by it. That all human beings are created in the image of God. It's as simple as that. From the moment of, uh, moment of fertilization, they're made in the image of God and they deserve equal protection and equal justice. And it would be great if one of these politicians would stand up for the lives of the innocent babies inside of the womb. But instead, stand up for laws that would protect the slaughter, the slaughter, the slaughter of innocent little babies. <coughs> you know, Bob Dylan said, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Now, he was talking about racism when he wrote that song, but what about the bigotry against innocent little babies? A philosophy that would try to define them as something less than human, but they're not less than human. They're actually made in the image of God. And when you pass laws to slaughter them, it's the same thing. It's built upon humanistic principles. You know, back in Connecticut, back in the day, they had laws that allowed there to be slavery because there are bad laws and bad philosophy. It was not built upon anything but the whims of people, and now we have people that want to stand for the slaughter of innocent human beings. It's child sacrifice. It's because your hearts are hard. Your hearts are hard towards God. And Ezekiel said that he'll take away your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Because the human heart, in essence, is a heart of stone. It is dead towards God. It is dead towards God. You see, the reason that you hold to the slaughter of innocent human beings is because your hearts are hard. Your hearts have grown hard. And I tell you, you need to repent in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your hard heart and ask God to give you a new heart. Repent of your sin. Because there's no greater sin. What greater sin is there than slaughtering innocent little babies? I mean, what kind of, what kind of society do we live in? Could you imagine, if I were in Nazi Germany, I would be saying the same thing to the Nazis, and I would be saying to them, Jews are made in the image of God. They are not less than humans. If I were back in slavery days, I would be saying slaves are not less than human. But here we are in the 21st century, and I have to have the same message. The little innocent babies in the womb are not less than human. They are actually human beings. You may not think so because you have a prejudice against them, a bigotry against them. But these are little innocent human beings and they deserve equal protection. And equal protection and equal justice. You don't believe in equal protection and equal justice under the law? 14th Amendment, have you ever read the Bill of Rights? So imagine, imagine that these, these babies actually are human beings. Let's just hypothetically say that they are, hypothetically for you, not for me, because I know that they are. Could you imagine how history is going to look back on you all when they say there are groups of people in political parties, but actually both parties, that believe in child sacrifice, that it believes it's okay to slaughter innocent human beings. But here we are, the 21st century, and we still are fighting the same battles for human beings. We're still fighting the same battles for human beings. Equal justice and equal protection under the law. That's all I ask for, that these are human beings. They're not just blood. What are they? What are they? What are they? Yes, I agree. Let the little babies have the choice. But when you take their lives, they have no choice. No, you, you know why you won't go on in the gauge? Because you will lose the argument. I have the moral high ground, folks. You are for murder. You are for murder of innocent babies, and I'm for protecting them. Right, Senator? Senator, equal justice and equal protection under the law. You can pretend you don't hear me. You will stand before God someday.
to give an account of yourself and all the babies, all the blood that's on your hands. You will stand before God someday. You will give an account and you will face every one, last one of those innocent babies. And yes, they are babies. They're not blobs. Those are little innocent babies made in the image of God. And it's only the ignorant, the unscientific, that would deny the reality. Let's just do this Socratically. I mean, let's talk about a zygote. Is a zygote alive? Yes or no? Is a zygote alive? Yes, a zygote is alive scientifically. It is science that zygotes are alive. Second question, are they a human life? No, I won't go home. Not until, not until we, don't, we stop killing innocent human beings. Not until we stop killing innocent human beings. Not until we stop killing innocent human beings. And the governor, the blood of these babies is on your hands. I confronted you one time in front of the state capitol. We are abolitionists. We're not pro-lifers. Pro-lifers are glad to make deals with the devil. We're abolitionists. Abolitionists say equal justice, equal protection under the law. That's all. But you all are not for equal justice and equal protection. This is your vulnerable point. This is your Achilles, Achilles heel. Your Achilles heel is the reality that little babies in the womb are human beings. That's your Achilles heel. You see? You can't justify it. A zygote, I'll even take the most basic, basic human being, a single cell that has just been fertilized. We know that that single cell is alive, and we know that it is a life. What kind of life is it? It is a human life. And since it's a human life, that human life should have equal justice and equal protection under the law. Hey, you all remember Bob Dylan? He was singing, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? He's talking about you all. He's talking about you all. How many times can you turn your heads and pretend you don't see? that these are innocent human beings, these are lives. These are human lives that deserve equal protection and equal justice under the law. But the reason you don't see is because your hearts are hard and you all need to repent. That's what this song is all about. That abortion is murder, but forgiveness can be found in Jesus Christ. That's why you all have hard hearts is because you have sinful hearts and the only way you can get rid of your sinful hearts is by the gospel of the of the uh, of Jesus Christ that he's made a way hey you know why my signs bent it's because Tim Lundgren took my sign last time we decided not to press charges on him but Tim Lundgren took my sign hey Tim hey Tim do you remember taking my sign Tim we decided not to press charges on you for assault. And also, you owe me a sign. Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim, you assaulted my friend, and then you took my sign. You owe me, hey, Tim Lundgren. You know me, Tim. You know me, Tim. You took my sign. We got it on video. Hey, guys, go to my channel, my YouTube channel, Norman Patterson. And you can watch Tim Lundgren assault my partner, Tim. Do you remember? Do you remember? And you took my sign. That's why the sign is floppy, because you took it. You stole my sign. But out of mercy, Tim, we decided not to press charges. Though we can, because what you did was wrong. What you did was wrong. And I'm ashamed that you would do such a thing. You can watch the video. Hey, Tim, watch the video. Hey, Tim Lundgren, watch the video. We got it on video. Actually, the police have it, too. Hey, officer, just to let you know, that guy in the blue hat assaulted us last time. So keep an eye on him. That's why my sign is all floppy. It's floppy because Tim grabbed my sign out of the hands of my friend and took it and tried to destroy it. 
Good job, Tim. Good job, Tim. You need to repent of your sin. You call yourself a Christian and yet you stand for the murder of innocent little human beings. How could that be? You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Rob? Jesus said, let the little children come unto me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven doesn't belong to child murderers. It belongs to little innocent babies. And Jesus says, what you do to the least of these, you have done unto me. So the fact that you have stood for, voted for people who are for child sacrifice, someday you will give an account before God Almighty. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. You owe me a sign, Tim. Tim Lundgren, I'm Norm Patterson. You know who I am. Hey, Tim, you know who I am. You took my sign last time and you tried to destroy it. Yeah, you could hide, but you can't hide from God. I am a Christian abolitionist. Abortion will be abolished someday. You know, you guys, you would have been the ones hanging around the slavery time saying slavery will never be abolished. But the abolitionists said, yes, it will, and they did abolish it. Abortion will be abolished someday. Mark my words. And history will look back upon you all and say, these are the people that stood for the slaughter of innocent human beings. You could try to pretend you don't hear, but you know what you do is wrong. You know what you do is wrong. It is a sin against God, first and foremost, and second of all, it is a sin against the innocent little babies that you all have overseen their murder, their slaughter. This is what you're all about. Take a look. Take a look. This is what pro-choice is all about. What about the choice of those babies? What about the rights of those little innocent babies? What about them? You see, y'all, you're, you're, you're pretending you don't hear, but you don't have an answer. Because I have the moral high ground. The moral high ground is all human beings, black and white and yellow, red, doesn't matter how big they are, how small they are, doesn't matter how, what their mental capacity is, all human beings are created in the image of God. And they deserve equal protection and equal justice under the law. Run away from the truth. Run away. Hey, if this were a Trump rally, I'd say the same thing to them, just to let you know. Because Trump is a child sacrificer as well. You're all in bed with the same, same philosophy, same belief. Not for babies, it's not. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, this is what it does. Take a look. Reproductive rights right here. What about the rights for this baby? What about the rights for this baby? This is what your reproductive rights do. It kills innocent human beings. How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? How many times? It's a bigotry against babies. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at what pro-choice has wrought. This is what you have wrought, the slaughter of innocent little human beings. These are human beings made in the image of God. You will stand someday before God Almighty. If you have no fear of God in you, then I pray for you, because this is what it's all about. Equal justice, sir, and equal protection. Pretend you don't hear. Equal justice, that's what they did in slavery days. They pretended they didn't hear the abolitionists. I am an abolitionist to end abortion, not pro-life. You see, pro-lifes are going to make deals with you guys. But eventually, someday, history is going to look back on you all and say what a bunch of bloodthirsty, nasty people that would call for the death of innocent little human beings. What kind of person would do that? This is what your pro-choice has wrought. Pretend. Pretend you can't see. Let me introduce you to one of the children that you guys have slaughtered by your laws. They have no choice. It was a body inside of a body. They had no choice whatsoever. But the Republicans are no better. Donald Trump is no better. Not by any means. He's all for the slaughter of innocent human beings. How are you doing? If you don't repent, you're going to go to hell. If you don't turn to Christ, you will stand before God.
to be possible. Thanks so much. And uh, I'm going to introduce my great friend, the governor of the state. How you doing, sir? Doing all right. Standing up for the lives of little babies. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, they all want. I mean, it doesn't matter, Republican or Democrat. Now, they both want child sacrifice. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's only one God. That's right. Yeah. They'll all stand before him someday in judgment. So I let them see. Let them see. They pretend this isn't real. You guys pretend this isn't real. But every time you vote to keep child sacrifice alive, sir, more and more children are poisoned through the RU486 pill. They're ripped limb for limb. That's what they do, you know. Or they're vacuumed out. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. And nobody's more vulnerable than innocent babies. Yeah, you wouldn't want this in your picture. <laughs> Who would want a dead baby in a picture? We'd rather vote for it. Yes, sir. Rude. What's that? Rude. What's that? Rude. Not at all. Pretty gross. My kids are you know what? That. You don't feel bad about that? Do you feel bad that this happened? No, not at all. You don't. Sure See, so isn't that, that rude? There's a reason to slaughter another human being, sir. Um, what is that reason? It's the parents' choice. What's that? Well, it was the Nazis' choice to kill the Jews. Ooh, it was the slaveries. Sla it was slave man. masters to do whatever they want. It's the you, same philosophy. Really gross. What's that? Really it is gross. So are you, because you advocate for this. Thank you. What, what reason would you advocate? Really like are these human beings? Like kids. What's that? Yes. How about you not let them abort babies, sir? That's not an argument. Uh, that's about your level of your IQ. Whenever somebody flashes the bird, it says they have no argument. That is the last resort of a fool, sir. It's the last resort of a fool. This is it is gross. That's why I'm here because I'm asking because I don't want people to kill babies. Listen how how hypocritical you are. This is gross. What about abortion? What about the slaughter that this happened? Look at that. That's all blood. You don't understand. Is this a human being or not? Do you want like? Is this a human being? No, probably. What is it? They're probably someone that was not. <laughs> so what makes a human being? 
Someone that's going to survive. <laughs> someone that has a chance to survive. Someone that's okay. not going to kill their So, when they have people, none of us have a chance to survive. But this is really oh, I'd be glad to debate with you. you. Would you like to have a debate? No, you're gross because you would advocate for laws that would protect this rather than equal yes, justice and equal protection yes, under the law. That's what the slavery no. did. That's no. what the Nazis you're did. Really you got the same philosophy. Not, not at all. Silly. Your philosophy is what makes a human being? They are created in the image of God. Nope. And because no. they're created in no. the image of God, they deserve... Do you believe in the God 14th Amendment? Do you believe... By, how could you say... We, oh, you know that? How do 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 you know that? That's a philosophy. And that's what Adolf Hitler believed, and that's what that's what Stalin believed too. So you have the same philosophy, Friedrich Nietzsche, Marx. <laughs> Sir, show me your show me your IQ again. Show me your IQ again. Yeah, that's that's where your brain is. <laughs> what a rude man. I just believe in equal justice and equal protection under the law. And so you have a hard heart, and you are going to stand before God someday. You need to repent of your sin. You are going to stand before God. You, are, you have a very hard heart. You need really? to, forget, to really? get forgiveness have through Jesus him? Christ. Yes, I have, That's actually. So cool. He's changed my heart. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Wow, I didn't know God was an asshole. <laughs> well, if you are, then he is. <laughs> By your own admission. Equal justice and equal protection under the law. 14th Amendment. You know, back in slavery days, they didn't think that slaves were human beings. And so, Connecticut had a governor and the House of Representatives and Senators that voted for slavery to continue. Because they did not believe they were human beings based upon the Dred Scott decision. And here we are in the 21st century and we have the same philosophy that we somehow can determine what makes a human being or not. These are human beings made in the image of God and should have equal rights and equal protection under the law. But not here. If you applied the 14th Amendment, you would not be able to take their life or their liberty or their property without due process of law. But see, these are innocent human beings. Innocent. They haven't done anything. What have these little babies ever done to you guys? I'm so glad you didn't, uh, I'm so glad that you allowed your children to live, sir. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you allowed them to live. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that you allowed them to live. I thank God for that. I thank God for that, sir. Hey, go ahead and make fun of me, sir. You're all about child sacrifice. Say, so why would you engage me and say that? I am just exercising my First Amendment right. You're going to have to make a crack against me. To believe in equal justice and equal protection under the law is fundamental, that all human beings are created in the image of God. So why would you make fun of such a view, sir? Why would you make fun of that? You know, at least Paul Honing, at least Paul said... That's a reasonable position. I disagree with it. But he didn't make fun of me, Paul. At least I have some respect for you on that. But not, not people with white hair that, that make fun. You know, Paul, you, you gave me respect, and I appreciate that. But there's no reason for him to do that. That was, that was uncalled for. Thank you. I, I do have respect for you. I disagree with you profoundly. And I tell you what, Lisa Seminara is a hypocrite because she says I'm pro-life personally, but I, I will not do anything to change the law. I don't want her in office. I don't want you in office either. But at least you're consistent in your evilness. I hate to say it. I know how to say it briefly, but, but she, you know, to say one thing and another, that's a duplicitous person, and I cannot respect her. That's just the truth. So thank you, Paul. I appreciate that.
That's what they say about abolishing abortion. It will be done. It will be abolished. They used to say you will not abolish slavery, and here we are, 21st century, it's abolished. The, abo abortion will be abolished. I am a Christian abolitionist. Harriet Beecher Stowe, William Lloyd Garrison, in that ilk, Frederick Douglass, we have returned. And now we're going to save babies. Thanks, sir. Here's the future of the country. We're slaughtering them. Hundred million babies. This is the future. Hey Robert, how you doing? How about living in a world where a child is protected? <laughs> if they make it past the abortion, but then again the public works wanted to have not to protect little babies who were botched abortions.
but this is about our character as Americans. This is about what we are willing to work for and fight for and who we are willing to fight for. How about fighting for the unborn? How about fighting for the unborn? Why not fight for babies in the womb instead of killing them? Instead of killing them? You guys are such hypocrites. You talk about equal justice and equal protection, but yet you pass laws that allow there to be the slaughter of innocent human beings. Stand up and fight for this one. Yeah, don't let them down in the womb. Don't let them down in the womb. So thank you all for showing up. We have until 6 o'clock today to collect a whole lot more I voted stickers. So I'm hoping that everybody here will do something more than just standing here and holding a sign. Make a phone call, send a text, get somebody out to the polls, give someone a ride. Pass an abolition bill. Except for the unborn, <laughs> and I fight for the unborn, the little babies in the womb, fight for them. Thing. Equal protection and equal justice under the law for all human beings.
other way you can not raise your hand for whatever the reason, there's still a lot more of two hours before 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. We need your help. I need your help. What fears me the most is somebody that takes over this seat that is not me. And Torrington does not get what they deserve and they do not get what I've been able to bring back over the last 16 years. That scares me. It scares me for all of you. It scares me for the beautiful town that we're in.
bunkers left, so I'm not even going to say anything. Look, my friend Maria Horn said, do you have a phone? Well, I'm going to up the ante a little bit and say, do you have two shoes on your feet? Because the only thing better than phones, because nobody uses it. Kamala has texted me 7,000 times in the last couple of days, is if you can go door knock. Uh, and I'm going to tell a very quick story that is about Chris Murphy. I used to work for him for a long time. This famous story was about Dick Waterbury, who was a very tough professionalist, and he decided to move through a part of the campaign to make sure he got back to Congress. He still kept calling and knocking people up until 7.45. And one of the campaigns went to someone's house, and all I should say is 7.45 p.m. And he said, no, 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 Hello, this is Norman Patterson. I'm the uh, head and director of the Connecticut Foundation to Abolish Abortion. And I'm here in Torrington, Connecticut. This town and city, I actually grew up in the little town of Burville, which is a little suburb of Torrington. But I grew up in Torrington. Um, so I'm very familiar with these streets. Uh, very familiar. Worked at the Warner Theater. Walked around these streets a lot. So, uh, this is a Democratic um, rally here in Franklin Square. The governor's here. Let me turn around. The governor's here. Let me turn around. The governor's there. Blumenthal's there. Um, Paul Honing's there. Uh, who's that guy with the white hair? He's making fun of me from his speech, which I was wrong. Susan Bicewich is there. Um, yeah. So, I'm here because um, I'm advocating for the rights of unborn babies. I mean, both parties right now are calling for the <laughs> slaughter of innocent babies. They just differ a little bit. I mean, one of them is against 1%, is okay with 99% of all the child sacrifice that happens. The other one is just like full scale, kill them all. Um, so I got my sign. Abortion is murder. I got my abolish abortion CT sign. Yeah, and I'm just preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel and talking to people about Jesus Christ and calling out for the lives of the unborn. It says in um, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 8 to be the voice for those who have no voice. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, I still hardly can hardly believe that we are in the 21st century still talking about human rights. But here we are talking about human rights in the 21st century. And the human rights, I'm calling for the rights of those innocent little babies that are in the womb. And just praying that God will raise up more abolitionists, not pro-lifers. Pro-lifers incre incrementally allow it, regulate it, whatever. But uh, abolitionists... Abolitionists um, call for the absolute abolition of abortion. So here I am in Torrington, Connecticut, with the governor, Blumenthal, Honing, um, you know, a bunch of other bloodthirsty people. And I'm just preaching the gospel and, and standing for the unborn in the, face of, um, in the face of a lot of hostility. Because none of these people are for protecting little babies. They are for the wholesale slaughter of innocent little human beings. So, you know, I'm the only one here speaking for life, um, heckling them a little bit, uh, calling out truth, what needs to be spoken. Um, but yeah, so I'm here, and I'm just going to continually uh, call out and advocate for the, those unborn babies. Proverbs 31, verse 8, to be the voice for those who have no voice and so those little babies can't speak so there's people out there speaking for them and you know part of my strategy for the Connecticut Foundation of to abolish abortion is to go for the heart of the beast I think it's a wonderful thing I stand in front of murder mills I think it's a great thing and will continue to do so save one baby at a time if I have to and my brothers and sisters in Christ will have to but I say slay the beast you know, you can, you can save one baby at a time, do it. But I say save thousands and thousands and maybe millions of babies at a time by abolishing abortion once and for all. 
So that's all. I just wanted to come on and, and say that. And um, may God be glorified in all that I say and do. And may abortion be abolished. It will be. It's just a matter of time. Thanks. Well, kind of. <laughs> calling for the advocate. Wholesale slaughter. Wholesale slaughter of innocent human beings. By the way, we're a constitutional republic, in case anybody forgot that. I have a 19 month old boy. I actually got five grown kids and a 19 month old boy.
put on my microphone. Shoot. says, I hope you repent someday of your bloody stance. I hope you repent someday because this is what pro-choice rots. This is what it rots. Stand for the unborn, equal justice and equal protection for all humans. What's that? My, my what? What's that? Yes, I am. Are you? No? I'm a Christian. Okay. That is not your fight. That's because you're not first. You know our fights are individual. What's that? No, this is a it, this is a moral issue. We need to pass laws to protect us. But could you imagine that? Back in slavery days, could you imagine someone saying, that's not your fight. The slaves, you know, whatever. The, this is, you're a Christian and you don't believe that abortion should be abolished? Of course it's our fight. Who's going to protect the unborn? You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I absolutely do. The, the, the sixth commandment, thou shalt not murder. All laws on the books are thou shalt not murder against murder. We believe that little babies are made in the image of God and they deserve equal protection and equal justice under the law. Yes, it is my fight. How about, let's look up Proverbs chapter 31, verses 8 and 9. Let's, let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible. You are not a Christian if you do not believe this is a fight. Let us read that. Let us read. Let us read the Bible, ma'am. I cannot believe that you don't even know. Let's read. Come here. Let's read the Bible. Chapter 31, verse 8 and 9. Here we go. Let's read. Let's read the Bible. Let's go. Open thy mouth for the dumb. No, you don't want to hear the Bible. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. That's what the Bible says. Open thy mouth for the dumb. In other words, open thy mouth for those who can't speak in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and me needy. Let us read again, Miss Christian, whoever you are. Let us read now Proverbs chapter 24. Oh, but we don't want to look at what the Bible has to say. Let's read this verse. This one's a good one for you. For if thou forbear bear to deliver them that are drawn to death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth the soul, doth he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? So ma'am, you're not a Christian, you won't even listen to the Bible. Chuck it, you won't even listen to the Bible. You won't even listen to the Bible. Read, let's read Isaiah chapter 1. I just can't believe Christians would say such ridiculous things. Let's read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 10. Would you like to read it, ma'am? No, you're, you are not a Christian if you hold that we are not to stand for the lives of unborn babies. You don't know what you're talking about. This claptrap foolishness. And God will judge you someday for not standing. What's that? I heard about it. Thrive Church. Yeah. No, they wouldn't want me. I'm a, I'm an, a Christian abolitionist calling for the end of abortion. End of abortion is good. Yeah. So join the Connecticut Foundation to abolish abortion. Tell your pastor. They're going to say, well, it's a political issue. We don't want to get involved. No, it's not. It's a moral issue.
You see, I'm a Christian abolitionist. We're calling for the abolition. We're calling for the abolition of abortion. Because any true Christian would stand up for the lives of the innocent little babies created in the image of God. And one of the reasons abortion exists is because of the church of Jesus Christ. The blood of innocent babies first is upon the hands of churches and Christians here in the state of Connecticut. So while you all are wrong, the ones that are really wrong are the silent Christians that do not stand for the rights of unborn children. And so, make no mistake, I am not pro-life. Pro-life, the pro-life movement is wrought with compromise. They will compromise with you. They will allow some child sacrifice in order to stop others. I'm an abolitionist, just like the abolitionists of old. Not like John Brown, because John Brown was a murderer, but Harriet Beecher Stowe, William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass stood for those who had no voice. And so there's a rise in abolitionism, and you all are afraid because eventually, someday, abortion will be abolished. Just like slavery was abolished. You see that smile? That's what they smiled when the abolitionists in slave day said that slavery would be abolished. But abortion is an evil just like slavery was an evil. God bless, God bless you too, sir. And so I'm not pro-life. Make note, we are not pro-life. We are abolitionists. Pro-life. The Roman Catholic pro-lifers, they're compromisers. We are abolitionists, Christian abolitionists. We are in the spirit of William Lloyd Garrison. Look him up, folks. Look up William Lloyd Garrison. Y'all don't even know who he is. Look up Harriet Beecher Stowe. She was an abolitionist, and we are abolitionists. And people back then, when the abolitionists stood up for slaves, everybody laughed at them and said it's not going to happen. Well, I tell you, eventually abortion will be abolished. It will be abolished. And the reason you don't want it is because your hearts are hard. I tell you, your hearts are hard. You need to repent before God Almighty and get right with God. Sir, you got gray hair. You're going to meet God soon. And if you are not clothed in the righteousness of Christ, you will go to hell for all eternity. I am a Christian abolitionist, sir, and you had no right to make fun of me during your speech. That was very rude, very unkind. We are, we are abolitionists. We are abolitionists. No, your God bless does not matter. Because, sir, you are for child sacrifice, and the blood of all these innocent babies is on your hands. And just like Macbeth could not wash it off, so, sir, the only way you'll wash it off is by the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sin. And because you have a place of position, that means you will be judged much harsher than other human beings. Sir, these are human beings. You know, Bob Dylan said, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend he just doesn't see? Well, there we go. We have a man that pretends that he just doesn't see. When will you stand up for innocent babies, equal justice, and equal protection? You guys, what about me? What's that? nothing spiritually for any fetus. There is no such thing as having a baptism when someone is pregnant. What are you talking I know about? People, oh, they're still human there, beings. There is no. What funeral. are they, sir? You guys don't what are they? believe they have No, they should be. I do. I do. You, you wouldn't mean you guys. You don't what do about me? You don't even know me. You don't. Do they're anything. made in the image of God. I know. No, Can I ask you a question? Do you believe? I, let me ask you a question. I, I it. No. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Do you believe all human beings deserve equal justice and equal protection under the law? Every major religion. No, 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 no. Do, answer, believe answer the question. The person, answer the, you can like a answer the question. Yes. You do, all human beings. Now a zygote, is that alive or dead? It's not a human being. Is it alive or dead? No. Is it alive? Let me ask you a question. I have actually, actually I have. 
So uh, is a zygote alive or dead? All my friends answer the question. Nobody, so answer the question. You're, you're afraid. You're, you're afraid. I didn't uh, is the is a zygote alive or dead? So the cat. Is, is it, it alive? alive? Or the cat. Right. I just answered your question. Okay. Don't say I didn't is a it. zygote alive or dead in a woman's womb? It's alive or the it's cat? It's alive. No. Okay. A woman holding a cat. But what kind of zygote? Let me ask you. Next question. Okay. Is that a human life? Not yet. Wait, it's not? No. Well, it's a cat life? I just said they're the same. <laughs> they're both life. Oh, so cats and humans are the same? Actually, at that stage, you cannot pick out a picture, a cat and a human. So inside of a woman, is it a... They look exactly it is, the same. doesn't matter. Is it alive or dead? It's alive. Is it human life or cat yeah, yeah. life in a woman? I just your question, is it a human yet. life or a cat life? You what is it? What is question? it? No, I that's a good question. Yours. But you haven't answered. And I just told you. That. You I haven't answered. It's, it's a alive. human life. I so you believe? Why? How do you know it's not a human? Based on what? Well, first of all, the way they've been what treated is it? for centuries. And what, babies in the womb? Yet. Yeah, exactly. They've been slaughtered through centuries, of course. Well, they've been going to hell for centuries, according to your not at all. Only, not at all. Not at all. The whole, the whole belief. No, I believe that God is the one. Sin. They no, still have original sin. I'm not a Roman Catholic. I'm not yeah. a Roman Catholic. <laughs> I don't believe in the heresies well, of the because, Roman Catholic. Just, just you don't even you know, know my belief, because, sir. You, you know made all kinds of assumptions. I believe that God. Where's it? I mean, where? What's in the Bible? It's in the beginning. The about original sin that has to be Where's forgiven. it say original sin? Where's it say that in the Bible? Have you actually read the Bible? I've read the, I've read the Bible more than you have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, how, how many times it, have you read it? You can't it? even imagine I've read original it. sins. Where is it? I'm not going to have this And that's why we can be forgiven in Christ. It's in the beginning. That's why we're forgiven in Christ, sir. Run, run. So that's why we're Christian abolitionists. We're not pro-lifers. You see, pro-lifers will compromise. They'll make deals with you guys. Well, the Republicans, they make deals. They're, they're all child sacrificers as well. But we are abolitionists calling for the absolute, sir, the absolute end of abortion. And sir, hey folks, we don't compromise. We don't compromise. We're not going to compromise with backboneless politicians. We say that all human beings, all human beings are created in the image of God. And as created in the image of God, we believe in equal justice and equal protection under the law. 14th Amendment, 6th Commandment. So all human beings should have their lives protected. But here we are in the 21st century, and we're still talking human rights. We're still talking human rights in the 21st century. We haven't advanced at all. We don't believe in human rights. We didn't believe back in slavery times. They didn't believe it in Nazi Germany. And here we are, 21st century America, and we still don't believe in equal protection and equal justice under the law. Hey officers, thank you for protecting us. We were assaulted last time by a, a guy named Tim Lundgren. He knows me. So that's why we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. And Jesus said, look at this one. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a very basic Christian concept. And so if you do this to little children, this is what you deserve. This is what you deserve. Ma'am, equal justice. Equal justice. Yeah, you know, Dylan said, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Run away, because you're afraid of the reality that these are innocent little babies that you murder by your votes. What's that? I got five children. I got five children, but you would hold to the rights of somebody murdering their own child, legally speaking. Equal justice and equal protection under the law. Oh, run away. Politicians. <laughs> Politicians. Run away. Equal justice and equal protection. You see, I have the moral high ground. I stand upon the word of God. I stand for life. What do you stand for? 
Oh, a woman's right over her body, amen. But what about the body in her body? What about the body inside of her body? Where's the rights and where's the justice for the body inside of the woman's body? What about their ability to reproduce? What about their rights to choose? No, you guys take away their rights by allowing there to be legal child sacrifice. You see, you don't want to recognize that these are human beings. It's a body in the body. It's a body in the body. How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see that all human beings are created in the image of God? It doesn't matter what stage of the development they are in, their cognitive capabilities, the color of their skin, where they're born, their location. That's all. Equal justice and equal protection under the law. That's all I ask for. Equal protection and equal justice for these little ones. And the politicians scurry away. Equal protection and equal justice, sir. That's all I ask for. You know, you know I, 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 I'm all for you. you got to stand up for what you feel is right. I don't feel. I know it's right. And you know it's right. That's what you got to do. Yep. Amen. The problem with the world is not that way. Good, good. God bless you, sir. God bless you.